Hi, welcome to this lesson where I am going to walk through some questions on balancing chemical equations. Here we have a single replacement reaction where copper is going to um, kick silver out of this nitrate compound and take its place, leaving silver all by its lonesome. So my strategy for balancing chemical equations is to draw vertical lines right here and list all of the elements that I'm working with. Um, I like to think of chemical reactions as a before and after. So I would list copper, silver, and now I could list nitrogen and oxygen, but this together makes a poly. And this poly is not decomposed over the course of the chemical reaction. So I'm going to hold it all together because it's a poly. It's a bundle of atoms that works together and carries a charge. So that three is part of the poly. So I'm going to hold that while I balance. So next I am going to go through and count how many I have on each side of my chemical reaction. So I have one copper, one silver, and one nitrate on my reactant side, one silver, one copper, and two nitrates on my product side. So the issue here is the nitrates, and obviously I have to balance them. I have to get the same number on each side. So in order to get two nitrates on my reactant side, the only thing that I can do is put a two as a coefficient in front of the silver and the nitrate. So I would be working with two silver nitrates. Now when I do that, I have now two silvers on the reactant side, as well as two nitrates on the reactant side. And that fixed my nitrates, but it kind of messed up the silvers, but that's okay. Um, what's going to happen next is I am going to put a two out in front of the silver, telling me that I now have two silvers. And that's it. That's how you would balance that chemical equation. Here we have a synthesis reaction. This is aluminum reacting with oxygen to form aluminum oxide. So again, I'm going to do my vertical lines to separate, making a before and after. The elements I'm working with are aluminum and oxygen. And then I'm going to count how many I have on each side. For my reactants, it's one and two. And for my products, it is two and three. Um, so typically, when you get this two and three, like you have on the oxygen, the answer is to get both of them to be six. Um, so we can do that by putting a three out in front of this oxygen, giving me six oxygens in total. And then I can put a two out in front of the aluminum oxide, giving me six oxygens over here. Additionally, I can take these aluminums, the two and the two, that gives me four. And then that tells me that I can just pop a four out in front of the aluminum here, giving me four on the reactant side. Here's a chemical reaction that involves a base. NaOH is a base. Um, anytime I get a reaction like this, where I have a hydroxide and a hydrogen, anytime they're coming from water, I like to rewrite the entire equation to look more like this, where I have hydrogen bonded to a hydroxide. That's still H2O, which is a little bit um, different looking because that is going to help me. You'll see I got the hydroxide right here and then I have hydrogens right there. And because my hydroxide is not really decomposed when I write it like this, I can hold the entire thing together. So I like to do my vertical lines and then list all my elements. So here I'd be working with sodium, this hydrogen, and then that hydroxide. And that's how I'm going to hold them together. Um, so I have one of everything, except over here I have two hydrogens. So in order to get two hydrogens, I would need to put a two right here. That would give me two hydrogens, but it would also give me two hydroxides. If I kind of put them in parentheses, that may help you to see it. Um, so that's going to fix the problem of my hydrogens, but then it kind of ruins my hydroxide. So I'll have to fix that by putting a two right here. That gives me two hydroxides and now two sodiums, which I can then fix by putting a two right there. And now I have two of everything. Here's another example. We have sulfur dioxide reacting with oxygen in a synthesis reaction to form sulfur trioxide. 
In this case, I'm only working with sulfur and oxygen. This one's a little tough because my oxygens on the reactant side are split between two species or two um, pieces of this chemical reaction. So in total, I have one sulfur, but I have four oxygens, two from the sulfur dioxide and two from the O2. Then over here, I have one sulfur and three oxygens. Now, using your knowledge of math, um, you should know, I think it's the least common denominator, least common factor, least common multiple. I don't remember what the term is. Four and three, the smallest number that you can get from them and their multiplication tables is 12. So um, my four has to turn into a 12 by multiplying by three. And my three has to turn into a 12 by multiplying by four. I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but here we go. If I put a four right here, I will now have four sulfurs and then four times the three would give me 12 oxygens. Now I'm going to fix the sulfurs first because my oxygens are kind of split up and sometimes that helps and sometimes it just makes it a little tougher. So uh, watch me here. <laughs> if I put a four out in front of this sulfur dioxide, I will have four sulfurs in total, but my oxygens changed. My oxygens are these eight plus these two. So currently I have 10. If I change this coefficient that I've just drawn, this four right here, that is gonna change the sulfurs. And my sulfurs are good right now, I don't really wanna adjust them. So instead, I'm going to pick up the remaining two oxygens by putting a two in front of the diatomic oxygen in the equation. This eight plus this now is four will give me 12 in total. That is all I have on balancing chemical equations. Please make sure to leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I'll see you there. Bye.